The Your Safe Space podcast is recorded on Wurundjeri land. This podcast acknowledges the traditional owners and custodians of the land. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Welcome to Your Safe Space, the podcast. I'm your host, Adele Marie, and this podcast is here for you. It is a safe space for us to catch up each week to discuss anything and everything. And on today's show, we are talking all things time management and organization. Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. Happy Sunday. I hope you're having a great weekend. I hope you're doing well. I hope the week has been kind to you. It has felt super cold this week. I think for the first time, I feel like winter is absolutely here. And because of that, I've definitely got my Europe countdown happening. It is on the day of recording this 45 days until I leave. And you best believe I'm counting down. I think when the podcast comes out, it should be about 40 days, maybe 39 ish days. And let me tell you, I'm so looking forward to it just to escape one month of Melbourne winter. I'm sorry if you can't get away from the Melbourne winter. If you are struggling, go back and listen to the how to have a hot girl winter episode. And let's, without any further waiting, get into our highlights, gratitudes and struggles. Now, I'm starting with a struggle because I have been very clumsy and my week just yesterday started terribly. On Sunday night, I was going to record a clip for my vlog in the kitchen and I had positioned my camera on the edge of the kitchen bench and it was half on the bench, kind of half on that metal part of my sink facing the kettle. I've put it down, I've gone to touch the kettle and I hear just a loud crash. The camera, instead of falling into the sink, falls and drops onto the tiles of my house and I go to press the on button. It's malfunctioning. It's not turning back on. It's not coming back to life. I'm like, shit. I try to take off the lens, see if I can plug in the camera, see if that still works. It does. I realize then that I have fucked up the lens. And this is Sunday night at like 9 p.m. Mind you, I was making a cup of tea, trying to unwind and relax because I had gone and had a massage and had a pedicure and had a very beautiful self-care Sunday. And then it ended like that. And so my Monday, I woke up very early because I needed to go to Ted's cameras ASAP. That camera that I broke is for my YouTube channel. I really needed to replace it ASAP. And so my Monday was not off to the best start. I did have to buy a new lens and I wanted to also share that I think our words are very powerful because I had for a little while been saying on my YouTube channel that I didn't like the lens that I had and that it wasn't wide enough and that you couldn't see me. And I just think it's very ironic and funny and almost a sign from the universe. It's like, well, we'll make you buy a new one (laughs) because this is the way the camera fell. And thankfully it is into financial year two. So it is a business expense and I feel like I low-key manifested it, but it is what it is. It's done now. I've got a beautiful new lens and at least my content for Europe and all my other vlogs will be delightful to watch. My highlight is, of course, Europe. I'm so sorry. I'm going to try not to make that my highlight moving forward until we wrap up before I leave. But all the prep has started. I've been ordering things off Amazon, things like padlocks. I ordered compression socks. I ordered air tags, trying to be an organized queen. And I've even booked in all my beauty appointments. So I booked in all my laser, my eyebrow appointments. I've got my hair, my nails. <laughs> there is so much prep before you go away and I've booked it all in now. So it definitely feels real and I can't believe it's almost happening. I cannot wait, guys. I'm so excited. And then my gratitude is you guys and the support of this podcast. And I am obviously a little bit sad to be taking a break from the podcast when I am in Europe. So I'll be gone for all of August. I don't believe it will be four whole weeks that you'll be without a podcast. I think it might be about three, but just know that I'm planning some really amazing things from now until I leave. And then also when I come back for season two, we've obviously got the live show in the works. We have the journal and there's heaps of other good stuff coming that I'm planning for this podcast. And I'm just really grateful for your support. I don't know if you guys have seen, but but recently there have been some podcasts that have wrapped up and a lot of them were Spotify exclusives, I believe, or like Spotify originals. And you guys know I am a small independent podcast. I do obviously have help from an editor and help from a producer and help from my management team. But for the most part, 
I do everything myself on this podcast and I own it 100% and your support has meant that it continues and keeps going and I'm so proud and excited that I get to bring you a season two. So hang in there with me, stay tuned. Uh, You won't be without content, I'll still be doing other content while I'm in Europe as well. But anyway, on to today's topic because I am being a little bit chatty, but it was voted by you and it was actually prompted to me by a listener of the podcast. It was about two weeks ago, Chanel left a post in the Facebook group saying, Adele, would you consider adding to your weekly poll an option for organization and time management? I'm in awe of how much you fit into your schedule and it's probably just an Aries thing, but I'm an EA and a student and I would just love to hear about how you stay organized, manage your time and keep on top of everything. And I absolutely laughed when I read this, especially about the is it just an Aries thing? And I know where it comes from. I'm very self-aware and I've got to be real with you guys. It's not my star sign. What it actually is, is there's this thing in psychology called schemas and it comes from a schema that I have. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail on this, but schema therapy in psychology is what I've learned. It is a cognitive structure that serves as a framework for one's knowledge about people, places, objects, and events. Schemas help people organize their knowledge in the world and understand new information. They can also explain like your behavior and the reasons behind why you do what you do. Now, one of my schemas, and I can't believe I'm sharing this publicly, but is I had a very strong, unrelenting standard schema. Now, for me, the way that that shows up in my life is through perfectionism. It is through very high internal standards. It is through always having to have something done, always trying to succeed, always trying to excel in whatever it is, whether it's personal or professional. And it is important that I point this out for the nature of this episode, because for me, I think a lot of my time management and organization comes from that, which Yes, could be a good thing because it is a natural instinct for me, but it can also be a very bad thing because like I always say to you guys, it's about balance, right? And I have done a lot of work to rewire that part of myself. I have done a lot of work to unlearn that behavior. That's why I still go to therapy. I've got plenty more schemas. I'm not going to go into all of them because that's just like my deep, dark internal stuff for me and my psychologist. But it was a default way for me for a really long time. I can look back and see how it served my career. I can look back and see how it serves me in the gym. I can look back and see how it even serves me in what I do now. And so I really do genuinely try to aim for balance. And I'm going to bring you that in this episode. Okay. Yes, it may not come naturally for everybody. And I'm going to try and give you some practical tips on how we can get you there. The other thing I want to point out is that I work for myself now. I work and have the autonomy to work from home or work from wherever I like, and I have the ability to structure my days. I am going to be different to somebody who works a nine to five job. I'm also going to be different to somebody who has a baby or somebody who has two kids or three kids. I'm also going to be different to somebody who has two jobs possibly or for somebody who works night shift. And I think it's very important that I mention that we don't all have the same 24 hours. This isn't going to be a podcast where I sit here and say, oh, we have the same 24 hours. Nobody wants to work. You just have to get up and work. No, that's very tone deaf. That's very out of touch. I'm fully aware that our days are going to look vastly different. And so I'm not going to be sitting here and telling you guys that you need to work harder not at all. I'm going to hopefully get you working smarter and I don't want you to feel like you have to do more after listening to this episode. Essentially, what I would love for you to do is to do less in less time and just be more efficient. Almost work smarter, not harder, right? And I think that's what I'm going to call the podcast episode. I haven't thought of a name yet. But before we get into it, the very last thing I want to touch on is that the best organization and time management hacks and tips are going to be the ones that work for you. They're going to be the ones that are tailored to your lifestyle that you can actually uphold that suit you. And hopefully I can give you some guidance on how to figure that out. But of course, we're starting with a definition. Now, time management is the process of planning and controlling how much time we spend on specific activities. It involves organizing and aligning our tasks and objectives into a schedule, distributing the tasks and setting a period for completion. 
The purpose of time management is to enable us to get more and better work done in less time. I think I disagree with that part of the definition. I don't necessarily think it's always more. Less is more at the same time. But key elements of time management include organization, planning and scheduling to take best advantage of your time available. And so as I said, it is essentially working smarter, not harder. You guys, if you have followed me for a long time, would know that that is how I try to live my life. A prime example is the laundromat. I haven't spoken about the laundromat on the podcast for a little while, but I do my washing at the laundromat because it's quicker. If I was to do the same loads of washing at home, it might take me four or five hours when I can go to the laundromat, wash three loads at once and be done in 40 minutes. And that also goes for drying as well. But for me, time management is really just about consciously using your time to your advantage and being efficient. And I also believe that this episode will really go hand in hand with the habits one that I did and also the routine one that I did as well. Obviously, I'm going to go through everything with you in this episode. And I think we need to start on why looking after your time management or using it wisely is beneficial and some of those benefits. And so if you are somebody who is already really good at this, you might be able to relate and resonate. But if you are managing your time efficiently and wisely, it's going to leave you feeling less stressed. Okay, you're going to feel more confident in your abilities because it actually teaches you how to get things done and boost your overall mood. It also gives you a sense of accomplishment. And I think for me, that is the biggest thing that I look for or the biggest kind of reward that I get from doing something for myself that I've set myself the task to do. It can increase your productivity. You can get better at doing less faster which is what I absolutely love. And it puts you on track to reach your goals, both personally and professionally. You also learn the skill of prioritizing. And with the ability to do this, you can tackle things like procrastination as well. And as I said earlier, for me, this is something that does come naturally. I know that that is not the case for everybody. So if this doesn't come naturally for you, that is okay. I'm not here to make you feel bad or shame you or make you feel like you should be doing more. Struggling with time management is super common and something that a lot of us, especially the listeners of this podcast, struggle with, but whoever as well. And that's because it doesn't come naturally for everyone, which is so fine. And there are also some other reasons too. So some of us might procrastinate. Some of us might get distracted really easily. Some of us can be confused about what is important and what isn't. Or maybe we are just too giving with our time. So saying yes to lots of people, not being able to say no. Or maybe we just disregard the time, like we don't care. Maybe we just have low motivation. Maybe we have low discipline. Maybe we have low energy. There could be other health reasons that also impact our ability to do this as well. Maybe we have too many priorities. Or maybe our priorities are unclear, or maybe it's just become a habit that has formed and now is a habit that might be hard for you to break. Obviously, I always ask you guys for your input. And so I did put some question boxes up and some polls up on the Your Safe Space pod Instagram. And I was not shocked by the response. I am always pretty on par with what you guys need and delivering the content that you need. But A lot of you were struggling with procrastination. That was the highest one or the highest, I guess, input or response that we got. A lot of you said that you are constantly running late, never finding enough time to get where you need to go, or you struggle with the judgment of how long something will take you. So I think that's more about like perception of the time. Now, if you're resonating with this side of time management, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with you. You are not broken. There's really nothing you need to fix. But if you want to work on it and you want to get better at it, then I guess this podcast could be for you. Now, I obviously, as always, do research for this episode or all my episodes, and I try to give you my tips as well. So I've got a mixture of some research and my own personal tips. They are practical and they are going to give you guys great advice. So if you do need to take notes, feel free to do that as well. But let's get right into it. The first place you should start with this if you are wanting to work on it or you feel like you are struggling is with a time audit. It is an assessment of where you are spending your time right now currently and looking at it clearly and concisely. And what I would recommend in this situation is looking at how much time you spend on each task or in certain areas of your life. So it might be looking at how much time you spend at school or on work or on your hobbies or on housework or commuting 
on social media or on fun or leisure. The reason that I say this is probably the first tip and most important is because our lives look so different to each other. Okay, I can guarantee you now out of all the listeners listening, there is not going to be one of us who have the same schedule, the same life, the same 24 hours. And doing this raises your own awareness about your own situation. It helps you get a very clear look at where you are spending your time right now. If you are taking on too much, it'll show that. If you need help in some areas, it's going to show that as well. Or maybe you might be spending too much time on one thing. It will highlight this to you. Essentially, this first step is just about taking time to reflect and analyze and quantify how you spend your time. I think this then helps you have a starting point, right? You always need a starting point to come from. And this goes to even like comparing your own progress. But how do you set goals and how do you make changes if you don't have that starting point? So by doing this, it gives you the ability to then make those changes and set goals based on that data. Essentially, you're just collecting data on yourself. And what I would recommend is even just monitoring your time and monitoring your schedule for the next week or two, even taking notes either in your notes app or in a journal, seeing how you spend it, how long you spend scrolling, how long you spend doing whatever it is. No judgment, by the way, while you're doing this. We never judge ourselves on your safe space. We're always self-aware, but also compassionate and kind to ourselves. And this will then help you with the following steps and help you plan and move forward if you are wanting to do that. My second tip before we get into the nitty gritty is to be realistic about it. Okay, and this is so important because before you even get to the how, you need to make sure that you are not setting yourself up for failure. It's about being reasonable and being realistic about what you can actually do in a certain period of time. And a lot of the time, I feel like we might struggle with time management because we are trying to put too much on our plate or we are trying to take on, or we are taking on more than we can handle or more than we can chew. And I've even seen some people maybe try and cut their sleep to try and get more hours in the day. I've done that in the past. That's not a productive or sustainable way to go about it. It really is about knowing your strengths and knowing your weaknesses and then using them to your advantage. It is obviously when I talk about setting a goal, setting a goal is important, but setting one that is achievable or setting goals that are achievable is going to be more important because that means that you are more likely to get it done and that's going to teach you or show you proof and evidence when you do complete tasks and when you do get it done that you are able to do it to then build your confidence and keep that habit going. Obviously, I also want you to make sure that you have enough time in here for self-care and rest. It's so important and I have been neglecting it. I've been honest with you guys for I don't know, the last however many months. And on Sunday, I went and I booked a massage. I had a massage from my sister for my birthday. And I went and booked that. I got a pedicure finally. And I just had two or three hours out of my Sunday where I wasn't on my phone, especially in a massage. You're like face down in a dark room in the bed. And I forgot how nice that was. And I'm definitely going to make that something that I prioritize as well moving forward, which leads me to tip number three, prioritization. Now, I found this very cool thing in my research and it's called the Eisenhower matrix or the decision matrix. So if you are not driving, give it a quick Google. If you are walking or at home or listening to the podcast, wherever else where you can give it a quick Google, bring it up. It is a square. If you are driving and you need me to explain it, it is a square split into four. So there's a line down the middle, line down the other side, horizontally and vertically, you've got four squares. Okay. And you can use this matrix as a way to split your tasks based on their importance. So in the square, we have four boxes. The first one is important and urgent. So these are those tasks that are non-negotiable. You do these first and these are most relevant to your goals. In square two, you have important but not urgent. So these can be pushed down a little bit later in your schedule or in your priority list. And then you have square three, which is urgent but not important. And these are the tasks that you can maybe get some help with or ask somebody else to delegate it if you can, especially if these are things or tasks that aren't contributing to your long-term goals. See if you can delegate. See if you can maybe take it off your plate. Can you remove the task altogether? And then square number four, the last one is not important and not urgent. So these are tasks that you would do when you have free time because they're not they're at the bottom of the priority list. If you can get rid of them as well, get rid of them. The other thing 
is I have been doing this without realizing because I just use a list system. So I have a list in my notes app that is like a running list. I use it every single day and there is never more than five things on my list. I could probably even cut it down to four based on this, but I work in priority. And so I always put the most important at the top important and urgent at the top and then it goes down like that obviously there are going to be things that have deadlines or that have to be done that are non-negotiable always prioritizing those but not doing it in a way where you feel overwhelmed or you feel like you can't get it done and I had no idea that I was subconsciously even doing this matrix but it makes sense because what I would do is at the end of each day sometimes I cross everything off if I don't it just carries over and there's never more than five I have to stress that because I feel like if the list is too long I panic I don't even want to look at it. So keeping it short and sweet is the best way for me. Try that out if it works for you. And then our next tip is number four, time blocking. So this is something I do and I love. And I feel like once you know your priorities from the task before or the step before, you can then break things down into smaller, more achievable bite-sized chunks. And this will help you then achieve whatever it is that you need or want to achieve. Now, there are two methods that I'm going to talk you through. And these are interesting because I kind of knew about them, but I didn't know where they came from. So the first one is the Pomodoro method. And if there's any Italians listening to this podcast. I'm so sorry. I'm butchering it. But Pomodoro in Italian is tomato. And it is a technique developed in the late 1980s by Francesco Cirillo. And this method involves a timer and using a timer to break your work down into 25 minute intervals. So what you would do is set a timer for 25 minutes, do whatever task you were working on. After the 25 minutes, you would give yourself a five minute break. And then after four Pomodoros, you can then take a longer break for 15 to 30 minutes. So it really works in that time blocking technique. And I was doing this not in 25 minute chunks. I was doing it in 45 minute chunks because I feel like my concentration and ability to work on one task sits at that 45 ish minute mark. If I'm being totally honest, I'm probably at the like 40 minute mark, but I would set a timer for 45 minutes and then I would take a break, either scroll on my phone or go have food or something like that. I think I may try to break it down and do the 25 minute chunks in the future as well, because that might work even better or make me more efficient. And the reason this technique works is because it promotes concentration and relieves fatigue. So this is really handy if you are, say, a uni student and you're studying or you're working on an assignment or working on a project. It can also be really helpful if you're working on a project at work or any other kind of tasks that are a little bit hard and draining and really taking all of your concentration. The other method is the Swiss cheese method. Now, I don't know why all of these methods are named after food, guys, but the Swiss cheese method is very similar to the tomato method, where it breaks down the larger projects into smaller tasks. Now, this was created by an author, Alan Lakin, and Alan is the author of How to Get Control of Your Time in Your Life, but he says that the Swiss cheese method pokes holes in big, overwhelming tasks by breaking it down into smaller tasks that take five to 10 minutes to complete. And so basically what Alan is saying is that if you have a really hard task or a project or whatever it is that you can't be bothered doing, just give yourself an extra five, 10 minutes, set a 10 minute timer, go and get it done. And the reason that works is because what it does is it makes you focus just for a very short period of time. Again, then proving to you once you do it, teaching you that you can do it. And then that kind of keeps you going again. So you can then work in 10 minute chunks if you are wanting to. The other tip I'm going to give you on this is that reward or that break time after if you are going to do one task at a time is really important. And I also use a reward system because it works for me. But when I've completed a task or I'm done with something, of course, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to either go for a walk around the block, go cuddle Franklin, go annoy him because it's just usually us two when we work together at home. I say work together like he's working. He's not. He's just sleeping. But sometimes I scroll on TikTok. Sometimes I might even call or text my friends. Maybe you want to put on a podcast or do a workout. It could be anything. I think that reward does give you that satisfaction. Obviously, that's a very small scale, but I'm also talking about the bigger things too. So any bigger goals that you have that you're working towards, 
it is treating yourself and looking after yourself. And maybe that looks like a pamper day or a spa day or booking in a massage, or maybe it's having a little getaway, or maybe you're going for a meal out or taking yourself out for a breakfast day. Once you complete a large project or complete a large task, those rewards there and having them there can help you push through those really tough tasks and tough times. Number five is to stop multitasking. And I know a bit controversial with this one, but I don't actually multitask myself. And I'll tell you the only occasion that I do. But according to research, multitasking is generally less efficient rather than focusing on one task at a time. I was a bit surprised to read that, but it makes sense because what happens is when you are doing too many things at once or you are trying to do too many things at once, it impairs your cognitive ability. So what happens is you feel overwhelmed and then you don't complete the task and then you feel lazy and then you feel unproductive and then you feel unhappy with your progress and it starts that cycle. And obviously I'm coming to you guys with the facts, but research shows that it is more efficient to focus on one thing at a time because you are more likely to get the task done and that will boost your confidence as you head into the next task. And I think there is also something here that talks to routine and structure. And I think you guys can even see it on this podcast where I have such a good routine with it now. Every single Monday, I plan the episodes for the coming week, not for the day before, but the week coming. And then every single Tuesday, I'm in here. I know it's my recording day. I know that this is part of my routine. And I am successful at now adhering to that because it just is part of it. And it helps me focus and know that on Mondays I'm planning, on Tuesdays I'm recording. And I try not to squeeze anything else into those days to take time away from what I'm doing, one thing at a time. And as I said at the start of this tip, I'm not a very good multitasker. The only time I multitask is if I'm putting a load of washing on and then going back to work. That's the only thing that I can kind of do two things at once. Otherwise, I'm just focusing on what I'm doing, whether it's editing, whether it's replying to comments, whether it's you know, filming a brand deal or I don't know what else I'm doing, cleaning my room or whatever it is. I'm just focusing on one task at a time. Tip number six is to use apps to help you stay focused. Now, there are many apps out there and I would love for you guys, if you have any recommendations to come into the Facebook group and share them with us. But I personally just use my calendar or I use my notes app. Why did I have a mind blank then? (laughs) But that's how I organize and prioritize. And the reason that I love using those is just because for me, it works. I have all my emails synced to my Outlook calendar. I think it's my Outlook calendar or Hotmail, whatever it is. And I put the little widget on my phone as well so that I can see what I've got coming up for each day. And I also just love the ease of the notes app because it's convenient and it's there and I know I can quickly go into it too. There are other apps out there, some that I have tried, but not really had luck with that other people really love and I think are successful uh, Notion. It's very hard for me to use and I'm so sorry to my manager Em if she's listening because she tried to teach me it and I just I could not pick it up. It was too hard for me and there's another app out there called Habit which can also help and that app helps you kind of gamify your life and gamify the tasks. So the reason that those apps do work especially if you are somebody who finds that interesting or finds that engaging you're more likely to use it and actually take part in it and commit to it because it is aligned with you but those interactive apps are so helpful because you do stay engaged and you do want to use it and you don't want to let it down there are also other apps out there that can also help you minimize your distractions so if you are someone who gets super distracted there are these apps that you can get there's this one I've seen on TikTok where you you are like growing a tree because you're not touching your phone I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure you're either growing something because you're not touching your phone for set times and that can help you stay off social media if that is something that you were struggling with or just mindless scrolling. I then asked you guys for some tips. So my number seven is the tips from you guys. So I asked you guys, what are the things that you're doing to help yourself stay organized or manage your time? And this is what you said. A lot of you are living on list systems, which so am I. Some of you are scheduling it in. Some of you are taking a step back and then prioritizing and reevaluating what needs to be done. I love this one. Knowing yourself and what works for you. It's okay to take a break. 
someone else uses a monthly calendar on my fridge. I really love that too. I think that would be handy. And then another person is color coding and prioritizing in their calendar. And another person is allowing themselves a few minutes extra time for everything. That way I am never late and I always manage to get things done. And that is something that I have started doing as well, because especially if I'm filming like a get ready with me or filming clips for my vlog, I do need to allow an extra like five, 10 minutes to get it done so that I'm not running late. I still tend to run late a little bit here and there. Someone else is pre-planning their week on Sunday nights. I get started with my non-negotiables and then I work through the rest of my priorities and I make sure to schedule in self-care. I actually had so many of you who do a regular Sunday night kind of weekly reset or set up and I personally don't do that, but I think I might start doing it after this. I then have another listener doing an hour of power. They put on a podcast while they clean and they get it done super quick. Someone else is using their phone reminders, which is also super smart. I used to do that as well. I don't anymore just because I feel like the calendar works best for me now. But again, finding what works for you. And then our last one is I meal prep. I lay out my clothes for the next day and I clean as I go throughout the week, as well as doing grocery lists for when I'm shopping. And I think those are like those everyday little life hacks that keep you focused and just make sure that your workload or your tasks for the weekend don't pile up. And so I think there's something we can definitely take away there. My tip number eight is slow and steady wins the race. And I think you guys would know by now, if you've been listening to this podcast from the start, I always say from whatever I have given you from the lists or tips or hacks or ideas from what I've just spoken about, pick one method to implement. I know you're probably like, oh my God, but I got so many good things. Literally pick one because you can really set yourself up for success by not overwhelming yourself or not taking off more than you can chew. I also think if you look back and see what has worked for you in the past, you can mix and match and then work on time management that works for you. As I said at the start, what works for you is ultimately the best. And so if you are unsure or feeling confused after listening to this, what I would say is just pick one at random, pick one technique at random and then focus on that. I don't want you guys to feel overwhelmed or confused. And I say pick one because like always, I say implement it slowly, give yourself a month trying to implement it and see how you go with that. Firstly, give yourself a month to do the time audit and then give yourself a month to implement. And after that month, take a moment to then reassess what is working for you, what's not working. A really good thing to do is to adjust your strategy as you go and plan to be more effective as well because there are only going to be so many things that you can get done realistically as we spoke about and by doing this and then taking a step back to reassess, you can then see, oh, hey, this actually worked really well. I was really successful at doing this. I'm going to keep doing it or maybe it wasn't as good as I had hoped and I'm going to try something else for the next month. It doesn't have to be this big, scary, overwhelming thing. And I really want you to know that it is a continuous practice and there's an element there of also noticing what season of life you're in because what works for you with your time management while you're a student in high school studying for exams or a student at uni studying for exams may be very different once you are an adult and you have children or you have other commitments and priorities, okay? So obviously be kind to yourself, take it easy and remember that it's just practice. And that's my last tip. I don't want you to feel like you have to be perfect with something like this. Progress is always better than perfection, always. And knowing that managing your time management, that's a bit of a tongue twister, is an ongoing process. Life happens, things happen, and there's going to be stress and challenges and things that are out of our control or things that come up. And it's okay if you need to readjust or change things along the way. It's okay if this is a lifelong thing. We are always just humans doing our best, giving it our best and trying to make things as efficient as we can. And you don't have to transform into, you know, this time management mastermind overnight. Okay. Progress versus perfection. Progress every single time. But guys, I'm going to wrap it there. I hope that you learned something from this podcast. If you loved it, 
please let me know. Come into the Facebook group, share your tips and tricks as well. There will be a post for this episode like there is every single one. And of course, you know the drill. If you're not already, please follow us on Instagram, Your Safe Space Pod, Your Safe Space Pod. Wow. Follow me at Adele Marie. Please join the Facebook group. Leave us a review on Apple. Leave us a review on Spotify. Subscribe to the podcast everywhere, guys. Help us out. And if you loved it, share it on your story. Tell somebody you loved it. Word of mouth is the best way to help us continue building this community. I love you guys. Have a good week ahead. Be safe, be kind to yourselves, and I'll see you next time. Bye.